Colorado had one of the worst defenses in the country last season, but they made some major upgrades in the transfer portal. And I'm going to tell you who I think is going to start next season. You are locked on buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. We are also brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow to stay up to date on all the latest and you can watch, listen, whatever, however you get your podcast, I'll be here for you. Yesterday, we talked about who I think is going to start on offense. Today, we're starting, or we're going to do the same, but on defense. We're going to go through each position group. I'm going to give you about my two deep, why I think they'll start, or why I think this person will contribute. And then we will move on from there and talk about um, some other things, like the transfer portal. Some new additions are coming to Boulder again. So let's dive in. Um, I think we got to start in the secondary. I feel like that's the most straightforward one um it's kind of like my quarterback if you will in the sense that we obviously know who Shador Sanders is I think most of the secondary is not up for grabs I think it's pretty straightforward so we're gonna start with Travis Hunter starting at nickel uh realistically they want to move him inside I don't know if he's gonna play exclusively nickel but I do know they want him closer to the ball they want him to be more involved and sort of have more chances to kind of make some plays and um, be just in the in the vicinity of the ball at all times. So Travis Hunter, nickel, um, Herman Smith, he followed Coach Prime to Colorado from Jackson State. Um, he went uh, spent the 2023 season at Idaho State, six feet, 200 pounds. Um, he has experience all over the secondary. I think he kind of rotates in whenever Travis needs a break. Uh, then we're going to go to both the corners. I think this is a very strong secondary. You have Preston Hodge at one si- on one side, and then you have, um, excuse me, not Travis J. <laughs> you have Preston Hodge on one side, and then you have DJ McKinney on the other. His name was slipping my mind for a quick second. So Preston Hodge played at Liberty, played a lot of football at Liberty, has played safety corner, um, could do a little bit of everything, which I feel like is the more the merrier for Colorado. If you could just move people up all over the place, that'd be great. He had two picks. One of them was for a pick six this past season. Um, his pass coverage, great. 88.8. Not too shabby, considering they are replacing a guy like Omario Cooper, who had some good moments, also had some, we'll call it rough moments. And then the opposite corner is DJ McKinney, who was a starting corner at Oklahoma State. So he's familiar with the Big 12. Um, he was quite productive for the Big 12, or for the Cowboys last season. So, I think it's McKinney, it's Hunter, it's Hodges, um, or Preston Hodge, excuse me. So these guys, they know what they're doing. Um, they know kind of, they have experience. And then the depth pieces uh, are guys like you got Carter Stottmeyer. You have um, the most recent different, most recent addition from the portal, um, Ivan Yates, who transferred in from Fordham, or yeah, Fordham, I believe it was, or Fullman. Um, so. I think they have a lot more. Um, they have a lot more potential in this cornerback room than I think most people were expecting. Safety, Shiloh Smith or Shiloh Smith, Shiloh Sanders, uh, and th- at one safety, and then you got to go Cameron, someone Craig at the other with Travis J. Um, and guys like Carter Stottmeyer providing some depth. Um, other backup corners, you have Colton Hood, the Auburn transfer, and then R.J. Johnson, um, the Arkansas transfer, is also going to mix in somewhere into the secondary. I feel like he's going to play a role um, one way or another. Let's get into this sort of linebacker situation. Um, you have Trevor Woods, you have Levante Bentley, and then, of course, you have Nikhil Hill or Nakai Hill Green, who comes in from Charlotte after starting his career at Michigan. Um, we'll say right now they're going to have two linebackers on the field to start the game. Um, I feel like they'll mix three in. I think it's going to be Bentley and the, the Charlotte transfer, uh, Nakai Hill green. Um, Hill green is an experienced linebacker, 48 total tackles. Um, nine of them were for a loss last season. He was third team, all American, um, all American conference, excuse me. Uh, and he's kind of, He's seen things. He's done things. He helped Michigan get to the college football playoff. I don't think Trevor Woods is going to start, 
but I do think he's going to be in a lot of certain packages. I think there's going to be a lot of certain looks where they know it's obvious passing down and they're going to throw Trevor Woods out there to help cover over the middle. Um, when you have someone that has ball skills, like a, a defensive back who could also come down in the box and make some plays like Trevor Woods can, I think Trevor Woods is going to have a big role in defense. I just don't know if he's going to be a starter. Um, so that's my secondary, my linebacker group. Let's get to the front because this unit is worlds better than last season. I've said it multiple times. I don't think anyone's going to start from last year in the trenches on either side, really. Um, Hank Zelinkas did get a little, a, a bit of action last season, but I think they're going brand new line on both sides of the ball, which is really interesting. I think on the defensive side of the ball, it's easier to kind of have cohesion and like it's just easier to get to um, to catch up and get up to snuff um, quicker than the offensive line. Um, but we're going to go with the first edge rusher. We're going Samuel Kunalola. Um, he's obviously uh, has a lot of potential. He had five sacks as a freshman last season. Wasn't even really a starter the full year. Uh, also, I forgot to mention that linebacker depth. They have Jalen Wester, and then they also made a recent addition who I will talk about a little bit later. Um, but yeah, Samuel Okunalola. Uh, he's a guy that number five defense lineman in the portal, number 54 transfer overall. Um, he's going to have, I think a breakout year or he has breakout year potential five sacks. Wasn't even the full-time starter. So you have him behind him. You guys, you guys got someone like Taj McCoy, Arden Walker, who played a lot last year for Colorado. Um, then we go inside and this is where it gets interesting. I think Anquin Barnes is going to get the start. I really do six foot five, three fifteen. hasn't played a lot of football, I'm at the college level, but he's just so big. Um, him and Torian Carter, they're just so big. And I think Coach Prime's going to want to get physical. I think he's going to want to get get those those big bodies up in the middle so that way they can slow down the run. Um, he did get the start during the spring game with the one, so I thought that was interesting. So I think Shane Cokes will be behind him. Um, the other starter, Chidozi Nwanku, with guys like um, Amari McNeil backing him up. So... So Josie Nwanku, the block boy, everyone knows about him. Uh, he's He was an elite wrestler in high school. Um, he's just one of those guys where he's plays well above his size. He's listed at 5'11", 290 pounds, but he plays, he's got strength. He's got muscle. He's got speed. He's got power. Like he's got it all. And I think he's going to be kind of a staple. I think he's already a fan favorite in Boulder. And I do think that he's going to have an impact for Colorado, I guess you could say. I think he's going to kind of help them lock it down in the front, um, in the front up there. Okay. Let's move on to the other edge. And I think this one's fairly obvious. I think you got to go BJ green as a starter, um, number seven, overall defense lineman in the portal. He was a second team, all pack 12 player last year, had six sacks, um, 83.4 pass rush grade. And he also had 14, uh, quarterback hits, which were the, th the third most in the country. So he's getting to the quarterback. He's getting pressure. You have him off one edge, Samuel O off the other. Then you have Dayon Hayes who transferred in from Pitt with Samuel O and four year experience type of guy. He's going to bring some veteran presence. He's going to also help them get pressure on the quarterback. So this unit is looking a lot better than it did last year. Um, I would say they're going to be able to stop the run more efficiently. I think with Robert Livingston, NFL mine, you got Warren Sapp out there helping all the defense linemen. They have a lot of potential um, in this defensive unit or for this defensive unit. And if you're a Colorado fan, you have to be quite pleased. Somebody do the fact that last season, I think you could look at the starters and be like, yeah, I don't think this is going to go well. And it wasn't anything against anyone. They just had to thrust so many guys in starting roles that hadn't played a lot of football. I think this year, when you look at it, like of the guys that I projected to be starters, Anquin Barnes is probably the least experienced. Um, yeah, I would say Anquin Barnes, Samuel O, and even Samuel O was quite productive. So they have a lot more experience, and I think that was obviously a plan um, by Coach Prime, and that was a calculated move where he wanted to make sure that, unlike last season where they were just like, okay, we need guys that want to come here. It's like, okay, we need guys. We need dudes, and we are not getting dudes like we need them. So let's let's just keep our fingers crossed if you're a Colorado fan because I do think that this defensive unit – um, can surprise some people next season. I think it's a really hard unit for people to kind of grade and understand because we haven't seen them in their entirety. But I do have a lot of expectations for this defense to be, I don't want to say one of the best in the country, but I would say one of the better ones in the Big 12 if everything goes right. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the latest transfer portal additions, departures, and everything in between. But first, a word from our sponsors. This episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by our sponsors over at Yahoo Finance. Now, 
Let me tell you, wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of your financial freedom, right? Well, with Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data, and tools that you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You say you've saved your research, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take all those investments to reach the next level by using what fin by using every financial by using what every financial great uses, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. With a, com a community of over 90 million users each month, the real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. That's yahoofinance.com. Again, yahoofinance.com. Welcome back to Locked on Buffs. Locked on Buffs. Appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day. Before we dive back in, and by the way, we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You know what else is free and available wherever you get your podcasts? our 24 seven streaming channel. Are you watching Fox sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting, make the switch to locked on sports today, a free 24 seven sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24 seven on YouTube or for free on the Amazon fire TV app. Um, Amazon fire TV channels app, part of the, the locked on podcast network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in and supporting every one of us over here at Locked On. Let's talk about the transfers. Colorado's made some new additions. Um, and I like them. They're both talked about one of them yesterday, talked about one of them today. Talk, And this is the first I'm talking about another. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Sometimes I eat lunch and I get the hiccups. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, my beard's very short. Messed up with the beard trimmer, so had to had to take it all the way down. But let's talk about Colorado's new linebacker. So they dipped into the HBCU ranks. They relied on the relationship with Devin um, Devin Rispers, the new coach um, on the staff, and they landed John Chaney Jr., um, F Florida A and M linebacker, junior out of Orlando, had his, the best season of his career this past season. Fifty eight total tackles, three sacks, one fumble recovery which was coming off a year where he had 48 total tackles and half a sack. He comes in. I don't think he's going to start. I, I just don't. He comes in at 6'2", 230, so he offers some size. I don't know if he's going to start right away. Um, I don't know if he was brought in to start right away, and that's okay. I think he was brought in to provide some depth. I think he was brought in to provide that linebacker room some experience. You have guys like Trevor Woods. You have guys like Levante Bentley, one-year starter. You have guys like uh, Jalen Wester, who played a lot of F at Florida Atlantic. But I would say this, this room is still missing that guy and i don't know if it's going to be him but i do know that he's going to provide some depth and now they have some more guys that they could rotate in they could keep legs fresh they could kind of mix the looks up um, depending on what his skill set absolutely brings to the table uh, because i do think that this defense is going to get a little more creative in terms of their looks and packages than they did last season last season i honestly think there wasn't anything against charles kelly i think he just wanted to play a base defense and just hope that they would just figure it out like whatever their base defense was that day they just wanted to stay in it and hope for the best because they had a lot of issues um, on defense last year, stopping the run, um, stopping the pass, and just sort of doing anything that kind of involved playing good defense. They were unable to do so. So let's let's look out for John, Johnny Chaney Jr. I think it's a John Johnny. Um, they also landed Ethan Boyd, right tackle from Michigan State. He started a handful of games. He's six foot seven, three hundred twenty pounds, or offensive tackle. Excuse me. I think he comes in and backs up Jordan Seaton. I also think if given enough time, he could probably push that for that right tackle spot um, with him and Khalil Benson. Or maybe even push Jordan Seaton for that starting tackle spot. This Colorado offense line has a ton of size. These are these are some of the guys that they brought in on the offense line recently. Six foot seven, 320 pounds, Ethan Boyd. They brought in Zach Owens, six foot six, 375. Peyton Kirkland, six six, three sixty-six. And then they also brought in um, a center from Villanova who six foot six, 315 pounds. So when your smallest lineman is 315 pounds at six foot six, it's a great problem to have. This Colorado offense line's big, they're strong, they're physical, and they're bringing in a lot more depth. So I'm looking out for all these transfers. I know it's kind of hard 
to transfer in during the fall camp because those guys obviously had all spring to work in the system. They had all spring to kind of build that advantage, but maybe one of them or a couple of them could kind of work their way into the lineup. I don't think week one starters will be definitive by any means. They never are in football. Um, I would say it, it honestly works like that all the time where it's like, okay, this is our starting 11. And then by week three, it's like, okay, we're moving this guy here. This guy is no longer in the rotation at the wide receiver spot. This running back is no longer going to get touches. But Colorado is making some moves in the portal, even though it's winding down. They got John Ch- Johnny Chaney, Ethan Boyd. Um, I'm pretty excited to see what RJ Johnson can do, the six foot two corner. Then they got Colton Hood as well from Auburn. So this Colorado team, Coach Prime, is making a lot of moves in the portal. I feel like they're all pretty necessary. And I think this team has a lot more depth than people want to give them credit for. And I also think that a lot of people are kind of wary about Colorado. They're like, how good can they be? Um, last season, they started off as hot as anybody, and then they fizzled fizzled the hell out. It was rough. It was a rough watch through uh, weeks, whatever, 6 through 12 or whatever it was. Like Colorado fell off a cliff. But I think they're going to be a lot better this season. I think the portal, they got depth. They got experience. They got some dogs. And that, those three things, depth, experience, and dogs, They'll go a long way. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the latest power rankings for the Big 12, where Colorado ranks, why I think they rank so low, and why I think a lot of people are scared to kind of have faith in the buffs. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, prayer, player props, and more. Go check out some Anthony Edwards lines. That dude is on fire. He is absolutely torching the nuggets, and no one could stop him. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to Locked on Buffs. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day and making me your first listen of the day. We are free and available wherever wherever you get your your not your power rankings wherever you get your podcast and let's dive in Whew. okay so shehan jayaraja or cbs sports he's going to be coming on the show next week he's the one that released these rankings i'm going to go through the rankings i'm going to tell you what i agree with what i disagree with and why i think he has colorado where he has them and that's okay he has them um just so you guys are like uh get to it already colorado's at number 10 this is how the rankings go utah won which I agree with. Kansas State, too, I agree with. They have a really good team. They just have Dylan Edwards, um, so they're kind of up. They're kind of on the come up. They have a good quarterback that kind of chased Will Howard out in the quarterback room. Kansas at three, Oklahoma State at four. I think you need to flip those two. I feel like until Jalen Daniels can prove that he can stay healthy, I'm going to doubt Kansas. It's not really like a talent thing. It's just an availability thing. If you're not available, you can, what, are you, what, what can you do for me? Um, Arizona, five. Uh, they re- return no Fafita and Tetero- Tetero and McMillan. They're both really good. Um, Iowa State, six. West Virginia, seven. Call them a dark horse, though. Um, they could be a team that kind of shocks some people. UCF, eight. Texas Tech, nine. TCU, 10. Colorado, 11. I think I said they were 10. Colorado at 11. Apologies. Baylor, 12. 13 is BYU. 14, Cincinnati. Houston is 15. And 16 is Arizona State, simply because of their quarterback issues. But I will say, Arizona State, and I forgot to mention this, uh, in the transfer portal segment, they did just land Alton McCaskill today. So that's a really intriguing running back room. Um, Very intriguing running back room, to say the least. Uh, But let's talk about Colorado. Why is Colorado at 11? This is what he says. Colorado's mess of contradictions makes them the perfect, or makes them perhaps the toughest team to nationally project. The Buffs finished last place in the Pac-12 in 2023, but feature two of the best players in the country, Corner Travis Hunter, Shador Sanders at the quarterback, they, per, they posted perhaps the worst run game in America, but every offense lineman and running back are gone. On paper, they have upgraded the offense line, but that was true last year before the historically bad results. Yep. The defensive line tr- talent transfer is off the charts, but defensive back is a little shakier from depth perspective. There's almost no way to tell what Colorado has with all the turnover, not even counting turnover over half their coaching staff and both play callers. Ultimately, the unpredictably, unpredictability lands them right around the middle tier of the conference. You know, valid points. I'm not going to argue with any of the points he made about the coaching staff. I think when he changed that many coaches, it is a little like head scratching. Like if someone told me right now, weapon to your head, what are you going to, what is Colorado's record and why I come to be say six and six. I feel like the team improved, but I also feel like there's a lot of unknowns about them. So 
there's just so much going on with Colorado, and it's really hard to tell. Now, I would say they improved a lot in the trenches. I think they added some depth to the secondary, which, I mean, we'll, we'll have to kind of wait and see how that pans out. Um, I think their starters are really good. The guys behind the starters at corner are a little iffy, I would say. But this team is very much improved. But I also think this goes to show just how just how tightly contested the Big 12 is. Like Realistically, Texas Tech is a team that some people may pick to win the Big 12, and he had them at 9. Um, same thing with like Arizona. He had them at 5. Uh, Kansas State's at 2. Um, a team like UCF, maybe they get hot. So the Big 12 is just like this hodgepodge of frisky teams that are going to go head-to-head every single week and kind of duke it out. And like every week, it's going to be like, well, this team surprisingly lost to someone. Oh, this team surprisingly lost to this person. And it's like, we have nothing. We have no idea what to expect, but I I do know it's going to be awesome. You guys won't want to miss it when Shayhan comes on the show next week. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day, making me your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, all that jazz, and I will see you guys tomorrow.